we're here with a final interview with the two finalists of the Board Game Geek Tournament. With me is Orange Devil, and uh, who unfortunately only reached the second place once more. And uh, Adam Stradomski, apparently, or otherwise known as Nermis. So, hello, guys. Hi. Hey, guys. So, uh, uh, let's start with uh, Orange Devil. What the hell were you thinking? Uh, I was thinking I am a lot of points down, and if he gets hostile takeovers, he can win. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of cards, and none of them were Scorched Earth, so it might not be in the deck, and even if it is in the deck, he might have only one, because he <laughs> hasn't seen that many cards yet. So, you know, you took the risk. take risks. I, yeah. gotta, I gotta be trying, like, like, I gotta try to deny him his R&D as much as I can. Because that way I can try to get the hustle takeovers and get the win. And I can make him spend a whole lot of money to uh, get big ice, which I knew he had in his hand, because those were the cards that I did see. Mm -hmm. uh, to use that on R&D, waste a lot of resources there, and then keep the remote small. And then eventually, hopefully, I'll draw into my sneak door to either get the agendas that by then he must have accumulated out of hand, or he's going to have to start pumping uh, stuff through the remote, even though it's still small, mm -hmm. and I have a chance of actually getting all of them. Um, um, that's the long-term plan, but, you know, I did need to put a lot of pressure for that, because if he gets any time at all to build up and say, you know what, I have a big remote and my centrals are protected, then even though I might win the game, I'm never going to snipe all the agendas, and he's going to score at least one, and that's all he needs. Yeah, and that's what I... Uh what me and the Pablo uh, Cordon were thinking about. Uh, we said, okay, he's probably suspecting he doesn't have enough uh, score stairs in his hand to flatline him. But unfortunately, Adam had drawn two score stairs in his hand at the start of the game. Um, Adam, what do you think uh, about your play? Do you think uh, uh, Orange Devil could have played it uh, better on the first so, game? After first game, I can say that I'm, yeah. Lucky fucking buster. <laughs> uh, By the way, <laughs> <laughs> but it happened to me like all the final games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, my my criminal is pretty aggressive, but what I saw a few times, you know, just picking up three pointers from R and D, it was yeah, it was very lucky. Uh, the truth is that uh, we were watching uh, the hand of Foreign Devil with Gordon. It was like, man, you had, like, you knew what was in his deck because he was drawing ice for 10 turns and then suddenly when you decide to run R&D finally, it's with two agendas. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and you know what? I knew it the second he fucking got the fem out. I was like, oh god, he's gonna get two free accesses and he's gonna get, like, five points. I mean, I was already thinking, first turn, he does the maker's eye, I'm like, oh, watch him, what, just watch him draw seven points, right? <laughs> and then... I'm not and that he, lucky. Buster. And he goes like access first cards, two points. And I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> and then, okay, then that's it. He gets the two points. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And I felt I had a complete lock on that first game, right? He wasn't going to be able to really get to my money in a good way. Uh, we I thought had, the same thing. We thought exactly. We said, I okay, had, it's, in the, it's in the game I for. Feeling, I was feeling very good about that game to the point where I was thinking I was going to win the Corp game, which is always huge, you know? I mean, had I won the Corp game, this runner game would have looked very different because I wouldn't have done that risk I just took here, right? And I would have just played it very slow and tried to snipe agendas out of the remote or maybe hand when I have the sneak door. And really, it would be very unlikely that I wouldn't win. Yeah. So I was feeling really, really good about my Corp game. And then the account cipher comes out and he keeps the tags. I'm a little bit like, I don't know, he's taking like a really big risk here and that sucks. Because um, you don't have st uh, score stairs in your deck. Yeah, and he got the one PSF, so I couldn't even I couldn't even punish it later in the game. So I mean, he was taking a big risk, but it was paying off for him, and that, that you know, cutting those corners really hurt me. But I was thinking, okay, the weakness here, obviously, I saw one Maker's Eye. I expected him to basically say, I can now get through that toll booth with Maker's Eye and see three more cards. Um, I had to take that risk because that would at least bankrupt him. Right, and then he'd be completely broke again when ice, I would just have ice everywhere and a lot of money in the bank and still more ice in my hand that I would install to be even more secure and I would just have really like a deadlock on that game and if I wouldn't have won it, I would have had at least a lot of points out of it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah right. so, Adam, so, so, so then the, 
the turn was like he account siphoned me and the weakness was obviously RD. And he ended up going with the Femme and then having basically two free accesses from that. He could have gone if he had the card instead, he could have gone Maker's Eye with the Crypses. Um, so you might be wondering, okay, so then why didn't you just put like another ice, like a big ice or something, like another tool booth that I had in my hand on the R&D right away. And that's because the account siphon just takes just enough money away that if I had done that and he had run early enough in his turn, then he could have then said, oh, well, then I'll just go in your remote and kill your, kill your mate. Yeah. And that would be really bad. Yeah, that, that was the idea, right? Just to uh, focus you a little more on the centrals, yeah. spend your cash and then hit that remote. Yeah, I w I w Other way, I would just allow you to broke and get that agenda out if it's if it was agenda, right? Exactly. I mean, I would have definitely the next turn had you not gotten two agendas on that one, I would have put down another toll booth and maybe even one more ice on H on uh, on R and D, and then probably another one on the on the remote. Yeah, the the hand. Um, and I would have then had the money to like do that safely and protect my melange to the point where he probably could have gotten to the melange, but it would have cost him so much he'd be broke after, which I'm okay with. Like that's an okay trade. Mm -hmm. uh, so my draw, my initial hand was like fam and Cripsis. As I said, whoa, it will be a bit uh, risky, right? But on the other hand, I had this maker's eye and and, yeah. uh, and siphon. So I decided, okay, I will stay with it, yeah, because I should get either hand with the siphon or R&D. Yeah. So, yeah, that makers I didn't do much because the agenda was first, right? But still... Yeah, I think you uh, should have run without the maker's eye first. Maybe. Like, just run normal and then use maker's eye after. Yeah, but otherwise, if, it's not, if you don't hit an agenda or a trustable resource, you just waste a run. Yeah, so when I play, you know, at start, Mercury's makers are a, even good to see what you are, you know, drawing, right? So yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so, uh, Adam, what, how do you feel about winning this tournament? Is uh, Are you an experienced player or uh, is this your first time in uh, such stiff competition? Um, yeah, it's first time. Mm. This, such competition. Um, I played some tournaments in Warsaw, which I was like near near the first place. I was <laughs> second and third. Mm -hmm. um, I played a bit Warhammer Invasion mm -hmm. a few years back, yeah, but not not on the tournaments. So how do you uh, find the skill of the players in the tournament compared to uh, the tournaments you've been in? Wait, can I ask a question first, or actually repeat um, Pavlos's question? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, which was, um, why did you keep the tags? Because, you know, uh, uh, DB0 and I, we know that Orange Devil isn't running Scorchers. So we're like, okay, he's lucky now. But why did you actually keep those tags? Um, it's the way I play Criminal, basically. I wanted to draw uh, last crit. Yeah. And yeah. I wanted to have four cards in my hand. And, and that was the the idea. I don't want to be slowed by, by the tags. Uh, I, yeah, DBs are so my game with NBN deck when mm -hmm. I basically just blitz don't, through. Doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. He was playing against the NBN deck that was using tags just to scare the runner. He didn't have any tag punishment, I think, except some PSF. And Nervis just plays through all the uh, data ravens and the traces and everything, didn't care. Yeah, I can understand that if you have a flash screen on the table, but we don't have one yet. I mean, the same thing that happened to me in the second game could have happened to him very easily, I think. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah of course, that was the risk. Yeah. But uh, on the other hand, I was, you know, feeling that you are getting more, uh, you know, more stable, mm -hmm. you are getting the advantage, right? So I yeah. needed to, started to take more risks. Yeah. We, we basically both took the same risk. And Mm -hmm. didn't pay off for me. Yeah. Um, so back to the question. Uh, how do you compare the uh, uh, competition that you faced in Octagon to the real life competition? Um, it's hard to say because uh, we have pretty, like in Warsaw, there are few skilled players. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they were top players in Warhammer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Basically, I play with them, yeah, and they are very tough. But uh, uh, on the other hand, the finals also were tough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I was mostly scared of 
playing the final with Hollis. Yeah. <laughs> so when he <laughs> when he lost his semifinals, oof. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Orange, right? But yeah, uh, it's, we, it's, we... Okay, it's okay. Hollis thinks I'm better than him, so I, my, my ego is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I played few games with you. I played few games with Hollis, and I believe uh, I have better uh, lose streak. <laughs> yeah, with you than with him. I I believe I only won one game with him. Yeah. So. Mm. On the other hand, uh, Orange Devil uh, at least managed to defeat his nemesis. Yeah. From this tournament and the last, wow. how how did you feel uh, when you actually managed to overcome Malefact? I got both my nemesis. Like I got Hollis too. He beat me too last tournament. Yeah, but he didn't. You he didn't actually beat you in the same in the end. Because no. Okay, but yeah. But uh, Malefact actually kicked win, won against you both in the Swiss and in the uh, previous yeah. tournament. Yeah. So I mean, I was like pretty nervous for that game because. Um, like I think Malefact is a really good player, mm -hmm. but I also think that I sometimes do see weaknesses in his play. Um, like not like oh weaknesses as in oh he's really bad, but you know opportunities to say, you know, I don't, I don't like I don't think he is. Um, uh, how do I put this? Like I don't I don't want to diss on him. You know he's like a really good player. Let's I want to put that out first. Mm -hmm. But I do you think, don't think he's undefeatable. No, I, I think, like, I can beat him. But, yeah, obviously you can, but, you just did. But, but then, both in the games, in the tournament, in the finals last time, and in the Swiss round, and in a couple of casual games that we play, he just has, um, like, I don't want to say he has all the luck, but he has, he had this tendency to have the agenda distribution in the deck work out in his favor. Multiple <laughs> times. Well, you to know, tell like, you the truth. If it would be good for him that the agendas would be buried, they were buried. <laughs> and if that was really, really annoying, and I was scared that that would happen again, because the, the deck he was running in this tournament, his hot fire deck, which he has now posted on, mm -hmm. the, um, on the forums, that deck is, it becomes impossible if his agendas are buried, and there's only seven in the deck, so it's not even entirely unlikely that like a bunch of them are, are yeah. buried. And it becomes impossible to score anything against it, because he's, um, you know, he's got the ash, and he's got a whole bunch of money generation, and it becomes infeasible for you to trash all the money generation because of the um, encryption protocols. So you, you're, you're either broke, and then he doesn't need a big bank for Ash to be effective, or you have a lot of money, but so does he, and Ash will still punish you. Basically. Yeah. So um, I was really nervous going up against him again for the second time. Plus, he knew for a fact at that point that my deck didn't have Scorched Earth in it, so that made his running a little easier, hmm. which is the last thing I needed. Yeah. I, yeah, I was really, really, really happy winning that game. I think it was like, it's. I think only one side got casted. It was, pretty, it was the, the best game where it got casted, mm. but it was a really happy game. Gordon, do you want to uh, ask anything? Um, not really sure. What about the, uh, oh, Adam, you said you were playing regionals on Sunday. What do you think? What decks are you going to bring? What do you think about the current matchup? Um, so... Two weeks ago, I was thinking about basically standard uh, HB. Who's whistling? <laughs> Sorry, that's me. <laughs> They're coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> Run. Your cat. Uh, London. Yeah, go on. Your <laughs> cat. Uh, okay, so uh, HB fast advance is criminal, but now I will be picking Wayland. Uh, yeah, Wayland and criminal. So it's basically the same now, but yeah, because I I was really fed up with this HB fast advanced deck. I like it, but uh, too too many players play it. Mm. So I decided to switch. What? Uh... I, I, I don't like noise work mail workshop. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm with you for that. <laughs> Does anybody plan to play uh, the workshop noise? Because it seems that everybody's complaining that noise is too powerful, but I uh, don't actually see him so much. So, uh, so this in, workshop, in, I think, has a real weakness right now with um, being blown up. Yeah. Uh, and with their tags. really not so popular. There are guys that play him, but uh, I think still criminal, maybe. And uh, recently, Kate with the uh, big link and big rig deck, it's mm. really popular here. Mm. I, think, I think Noise Workshop was dominant when it was just the third pack, but with the fourth pack, Oversight AI makes it such that you can... 
have a much better chance at creating that Wayland server with the posted bounty in it that Noise cannot get in. Mm -hmm. And if he somehow does pull a trick from you know out of his ass, then obviously you can still see swords after that and kill him. And that's just a really serious, serious weakness. Yeah, yeah. Or for Noise Workshop, that there's no really good answer to it. Mm -hmm. Whereas other decks don't really have that, I think. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it, it got a lot less good on the, uh, after the fourth back. It's yeah. but good though. Agro Gabe is so fucking consistent and so good and you I think you can play a deck from like what lies ahead or chase him out and still have a very good possibility yeah. of winning lots of games. It's um, because you take control of the economy so early. Yeah. yeah. And do you guys think um, that uh, even though there was uh, quite a significant element of luck, do you think that you could have uh, avoided it? Could you have, would you have played it better? I mean, I, I could have iced up, um, like, I was really doubting if I wanted to ice up R&D in my first turn instead of HQ, but I can't say it's just too punishing to try anything like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, he says now he had it in his hand first turn, so I'm very happy I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing I could have done is I could have um, iced up R&D with the second piece of ice a turn earlier. And that might be the moment that people look at and go like, oh, that's his mistake, that's what he should have done. Mm. But I, I do I believe the same, to tell you the truth. I th yeah. I think that's not true. I, can't, I think that's not a mistake. Um, you can never play 100% safe, and you gotta allow some R&D access in the game. Yeah, like I did it, yeah. I just put this ice wall and then yeah. allowed you to pick. You, you have yeah. to, because if you... I mean, you can actually play that your R&D is completely safe, but you're not gonna have any money, and you're not gonna create a remote, like, forever. Yes, but I think uh, if you can... Pro if you can let the R&D access, I mean, you were probably expecting FM to come at some point, and even a, a cheap ice on R&D, the cheapest you can do, and one of the enigmas or the wall of ice. I didn't, I didn't have any cheap ice because you I'm did. a piece of ice at that point. Yeah, you, I did, you did, you I did. Because I cannot launch, so that nothing is cheap. You ha problem. Oh, you mean you would lose the... I would lose a turn of mail launch. A turn of mail launch, okay. Yes, and I need the money first because I need to be able to have um, the money in hand to res that um, R&D ice and to res the stuff. I think you were at 20 credits. Why do you think you wouldn't have enough money? 20 credits after the melee. No, no, you yeah. were at 20 credits uh, the turn before. Yeah, and then I got a count siphon. Yeah, but that's not dist destructive. You are at 15 then. Uh, well, I was on 12, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know. I, that. I think you could have easily protected them and lands and the R&D by playing the two cheap eyes you had. You had a wall of static and an enigma, and you could have protected both the servers. That puts me on 10 credits. Yes, and? It would have been really hard for Adam... What eyes was on, on remote? Um, I had an archer and a... Ice wall. Uh, uh, ice wall. Um, but, okay. Uh, it was obviously a, a risk you had to take. You were probably not expecting him to hit two agendas one after the other. Yeah, yeah. the thing is, had he not drawn five points out of it, I would have had a lockdown on the game. Yeah. And I feel that I would have had... I feel I would have had yeah. five points minimum. Do you guys feel that uh, in that kind of um, uh, random chance is uh, what actually uh, might ruin... Uh, might give the impression that the game is uh, lacking? Um... When you play like a single, so. when you play like a single match like this, it does yeah. leave a little bit of a sour taste. Mm -hmm. You know, like it sucks to lose this way. But um, in the end, the game is a risk management game where you play um, basically against hidden odds. Like, mm -hmm. well, the odds are you can calculate the odds, but you'll never know. Um, you know. Exactly. You could guess that you, you know, you have like three agendas in hand, then probably you won't have in the next turns draw an agenda but then you can have two in the next turns right yeah. you don't know but still it's uh i know i i find this really enjoying that uh sometimes if i i like i don't care if i lose because of uh, lack of the opponent of like bad draws from mm -hmm. the, yeah i i don't like to lose if i did something wrong you know? mm. But uh, the, the the thing is, if if you took out the 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 random element that it does um, that it that it is, the game would become a pure math game, and I don't think it would be interesting. Yeah, probably. Yeah, the same. So, but I, I mean, do I do think it the chess will be better. Probably. Like I said, there you can have some games that are just um, 
growth and probably not very fun. Like, had he gotten seven points off of the Maker's Eye first turn, it can happen. It happens. Yeah. Um, You've done it to me. Yeah, I have. I've done it to Hollows. I've, I've seen it happen to me like two or three times. Um, there's nothing you can even do about it, because even if you ice up really good on your R&D, right, if that happens, like, in, it can happen turn 20, too. Yeah. It can happen when you're 6 up. Yeah. And then he just grabs seven points out. And the only thing you could do about it is not running three pointers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it happens over the long run. It, it evens out. Um, but to have those really epic games, I think is you know that that risk kind of just has to be there. Yeah. You have to take the risk sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's That's how it goes. Attention, emotions, right? That's the problem though. That um, you we we come in to expect the finals to be an epic match, and it ends up so. Um, anticlimatically and both games end very very fast and um, with not much that uh, you, you end up feeling that the game was lost mostly due to luck than, rather than skill. The, the, the thing is though um, it depends on what you mean with like climactically right I mean I got blown up it's, it's kind of a climax. Um, <laughs> the, 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 like if you want to have a really long game, if that's your definition automatically of, of a good game, if if he wouldn't have had those five points on that one um, turn, that game would have gone really long. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I would have had a really good chance to win. And even if he would have won, I would have had a lot of points. And you could have looked at it and gone like, oh, you know, back and forth game. And it went really long. And the score was something like five to seven, which I'm almost positive that that's the kind of score you would have looked at then. Yeah. Um, but the reason that that would have happened is the part you already got you know you got already my build up you got me getting in a dominant position but not um closed off yet and taking risks and him exploiting those risks to the best of his ability to get as much out of it as he could to slow me down and to get card accesses and that paid off for him and he managed to uh get in under the under my um like yeah, he managed to get basically through my defenses before they were completely. Well, done. to tell you the truth, uh, oh. the kind of games that well, I'm looking for, game the kind of games that are really, I find, think, are enjoyable to watch, are the kind of games I don't remember. I don't know if you saw uh, the game I think between Chop Chop and Selwith, where uh, I, I don't remember exactly who were the players. Where one of the players was playing criminal, and he had done a successful run, and uh, he just. Uh, he was holding the uh, scratch space in his hand. He could have actually survived the scorched death. And he was actually thinking what to play. And he decided not to play the scorched death, the, uh, the scratch space, and he got seasourced. Yeah. But it was that moment of tension, for example. Was, that was just a giant mistake. And, uh, at least I, like, I saw that coming from very far away. Yeah, but he can say probably the same thing about you. Um, no, no, that was, that was uh, Orange Devil. It was like. I know that I need four cards, right, to leave to Scorch, but I need to take risk. It was like instant decision. He, yeah, but that well, yeah, was the same with him. He... I mean, the, the same as if you, a guy makes, I mean, he had an um, aggressive secretary in his deck. I, I saw one and I trashed it. Um, if the game would have gone long and, you know, let's say that I would have gotten to the point where I would have been 5-0 and he would, uh, he would then place a card and I would have no infiltrations and he would advance it twice. And I know that I'm not going to be able to recover if it's an aggressive secretary. What do I do? You know, that's like a really tough decision. I'm going to have to take a choice there. Yeah. And probably I'm going to have to run because if it's an agenda, he wins the, the, the match. So I have yeah. to do that. Um, but that's the same as what happens now. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is that um, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it feels to me that uh, they had both uh, an element of luck. The other game I'm talking about in this one. Um, but there was more tension in the um, in the play there. Maybe that's because you know the cards. Could like, be. You know that he could have prevented dying, and then it's like, oh, is he gonna do it? And you don't know if he's going to. Um, on the other hand, as soon as I say, you know, I throw down that blast crate instead of dumping the tags, you guys already know exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah. Right. I have lost at that point. I just don't know it yet. Yeah. If you wouldn't know his cards, you would be sitting there going, oh, does he have the Scorched Earth? And it would be probably very tense. Yeah, maybe. There was also another game, for example, the kind of game that I want to see for is um, one game that I saw with Fritzler, where he was playing as the corporation. And he actually won the game where he the, the runner was, at the moment, he, the runner could break into everything. 
En de Fritzler had droom kwart of half agendas. En uh, hij droomde een agenda again. Actually no, he didn't draw it. He, he was he wasn't drawing the agendas and the runner had enough money to break into the remote. So he draws the agenda at the start of his turn and within two seconds he had played on the remote server without advancing it. Mm-hmm. And that basically threw the runner off. And the runner said, okay, that's a trap. He played it far too fast. Mm-hmm. And he let it through. And that was the kind of exciting play to see the runner agonize. Am I going to run? That, uh, that server, I'm going to run that, uh, that remote and deciding not to because the corporation just was far too bold with it. Yeah, but like I said, I had the same, I had, you know, am I going to run R&D or am I going to dump these tags? But with, you know, with the, that high skill players, you just basically cannot look at this, you know, at these little things because they can do it for themselves, right? To mm-hmm. work from, for themselves. And you just need to calculate if you need to check the bluff or not. Yeah. Because basically, I, I, I can do the same. One time I will draw an agenda and put it instantly, and the other time I will do the same with the trap. Yeah. Just I, I just, you know, thinking in, in advice, what should I do with this card if I draw an agenda this turn, right? You know, thinking about it, I do think that uh, part of the possibly lost tension is how fast Orange Devil tends to play. Maybe the mental calculations that uh, we think, okay, it's, that's going to be a hard decision. And he goes like, bam, 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 I'm going to run. Fuck it. Well, I'm, I'd make a lot of my decisions of what I want the game to look like when I see my opening hand, basically. Mm. Um, I think my entire game plan was formed when I saw his two ice from the first turn. And I basically went, okay, I got to try to get a lock on R&D because I have that um, option. Um, but I didn't want to do it if I couldn't, uh, like, I w- only wanted to do it once I had the Desperado, right? Because I didn't want to lose a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, all I wanted was the lock to let him not get agendas, primarily the hostile takeovers. Um, that's also why I sort of held off on the Maker's Eye, because the other thing I wanted to do was uh, use my Ninja to, uh, to get the account siphon scored mm. as fast as I could without giving up the R&D lock. Yeah. Um, I miscounted at that. I should put four counters on the yes. circle. That was a really big mistake, I think. Yeah, we were thinking the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to, but like, uh, it was be, it will be triple plus three, right? And then, oh, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I was very, I mean, I've got only the one um, the one ninja. I've got mostly Femme Fatale. This is the first time the tournament I actually get use out of ninja. But yeah, this was just able to say, hey, um, funny that you have two pieces of ice on HQ, but I can get in for four, and I'll gain three credits back. Mm. So that's a pretty good deal. I would have done that. Um, I would have definitely done it with all the account sizes. I don't think I would have done a lot of HQ runs because I saw so many cards off of R&D. But if it would have gotten to the point where he defends his R&D, then of course I can start hitting him on HQ, force him to ice that up, and meanwhile his remote just stays weak. And, you know, again, that's my long-term plan. Um, that's how it goes, though, because if you had decided, like, that split second, because we were talking about it with DB0, we, we knew you could pressure both, and I was sure I told him he's going to put down the Desperado and the, and the Corona and start, like, pressuring R&D like hell. Yeah. The thing is that if you had actually run the hand, you would have seen, you would have seen the scores. Yeah. So it's like that split-second decision that in the end might, might have actually cost you the game. Yeah. I'm, you know, like I said, I saw a lot of cards off of R&D. I saw some cards in the hand because the first time the Draco got rezzed, mm-hmm. or at least I saw at least one card. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, the first time he got rezzed, I beat the Trace. Beat big ice or something. Yeah. So, is there a possibility that he's running Scorched Earth? Yes, but I haven't seen any yet. And there's also a possibility he's not running any. And he's got the Roto Turds, and he's got the Aggressive Secretaries, and he's got the... Um, corporate troubleshooters mm-hmm. yeah right? basically so this was very similar to what i was doing with my deck so maybe just like with my deck he doesn't have the score to start okay um that was option number one the other option is i saw quite some cards um admittedly i think there were like four or five cards in hand that i didn't know so it's certainly possible we've got two scorched earths but it's unlikely mm. okay so um we have to wrap this up uh, how do you guys feel about the uh, overall the tournament? Do you are you happy with uh, how it turned out uh, with the running and generally? Orange Devil. Um, I thought it was fun. I'm uh, happy I, spo- I played. I'm also happy it's over because the decks are a little bit stale. Yeah. Um, especially, I think, 
uh, with only the first two packs, the game is very much runner favored and a little bit in a boring way in that um, there's not a lot of viable corp mm -hmm. strategies, I think. That's what, what, what just the first two packs. And really, you know, you have the next two packs and the game is just radically different now. And mm -hmm. I think for the better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very happy I got this far. When I was in Swiss, I was sure I wasn't going to get out of Swiss. And then I was like basically sure I was going to get eliminated every step of the way in, yeah. in the uh, the final bracket. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy I got this far. Um, this last game, you know, oh well. Uh, I, I've had luck too in the tournament and yeah. through this tournament, some games. What about you, uh, Adam? So, yeah, for me it was like the same. My goal was to go to the top 16 mm -hmm. at the start, and I was happy. And then each round, uh, I was basically saying, saying myself that, you know, I'm already, you know, uh, in the final, so it will be, you know, good even if I lost. So mm -hmm. basically I tried to not pump up some pressure or something. Um, yeah, my Polish community was very helpful also. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, uh, wishing me luck. Yeah. So thanks for them. And, uh, yeah, I also lost, you know, lost some some games in the Swiss mm -hmm. that it was based on luck mm -hmm. but I like each game in the finals the luck was in my favor yeah, yeah so. I mean you always have to have that um, it's a card um, game that's how it yeah, is. Yeah. one last comment I mean I um, having played my decks now through the whole tournament there are some things that I would change that I'm pretty sure would make it better do you have the same yeah especially this deck my cooperation deck because uh, I like my criminal deck it's very aggressive. I have, you know, iron cripses in, mm -hmm. you know, just to uh, as an additional breaker to, you know, force to get into our uh, HQ. Yep. Uh, but my, yeah, my my corporation deck is is trying to do too many things. Uh, yeah, at once. Ah. Okay. And are you guys going to join the league that is about to start? Yep. Yeah, of course. Excellent. Um, uh, Pablo, do you have anything you want to ask before we close? Um, no, I think uh, that's all. Excellent. Uh, I, would, I would invite you guys to, well, aggro game is aggro game, but um, post your decks so we get some more info. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, and uh, thank you very guys uh, for coming and uh, very much congratulations on both of your victories and you know, now you're going to have those awesome tokens that Byron C. Zimmer is going to make <laughs> to display yeah. your dominance. We'll and see everyone in the league, right? Uh, sorry? We'll see each other in the league. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. bet. Yeah. And now we have many more casters uh, online, so we're going to see more games uh, other than me doing all the job, all the work. Okay. Can't wait. All right. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, thanks. We'll talk again. We see each other on the online on networks. Thanks. Go get them. <laughs>